Hi guys, so in my previous video you saw me blow up this T502KJ digital thermometer. I connected the two different probes to varying voltage levels which caused uh, some of the circuitry inside this uh, meter to uh, blow up. Uh, I actually don't know what's wrong at the moment, uh, so just the symptoms at this stage uh, you can see there it's reading completely erroneous temperatures, 128 degrees Celsius on the one, 800 and something odd degrees Celsius on the other, and there are no probes connected. If I switch to uh, Jade type, you see it completely uh, changes, uh, also to completely erroneous readings. So I think let's open this uh, thermometer up and see if we can determine what exactly the problem is. As you can see, I already actually opened up this meter, uh, just took out the screws, the 9 volt battery is over here, it's got a little uh, enclosure that just sinks in here to contain the battery, uh, fairly well constructed, uh, not the world's, you know, the best uh, construction of course, self tapper screws. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at the accuracy here, you can actually see it's a rather accurate uh, instrument, uh, especially between the temperatures of 18 to 28 degrees. Uh, 0.05% accuracy in these, this range uh, with a, a K-type uh, probe. So yeah, I actually really like this little uh, instrument. Uh, it all has a whole bunch of additional functions to uh, subtract and add temperatures and uh, store uh, uh, temperature readings f over a, an extended period of time. And it also has some functions to uh, alarm or raise an alarm on uh, you know, reaching over temperature situations on, on, on a specific probe. So uh, yeah, it's it's definitely worth rescuing. Let's have a look inside. All right, so uh, this is what it looks on like on the inside. Uh, the probe receptacles are on this little piece board here. It's uh, loose. We'll take that out in a second. A uh, couple of chips in here, uh, the piezoelectric uh, beeper is basically just soldered with a pair of very thin wires, not sure if I like that. Uh, the power clip from the battery uh, also just uh, comes in here, a little bit of strain relief in there so that's a good thing. Uh, power supply section over here, so uh, yeah, let's just uh, get this connector out here and see what it looks like underneath. So this is actually a fairly straightforward design. Yeah, you've got a Texas Instruments part here, that's uh, one of the MSP430 uh, just uh, CPUs. This is a Holtec LCD driver uh, crystal over there. We've got a jelly bean part there, I'll have a look at that just now. And that HEF4070 part is basically just used to drive the piezoelectric transducer. And the microprocessor there, that's an M430 F135. And there's the Holtec LCD display driver. Uh, moving down, uh, you can see the power supply section just over here. Uh, some regulation, I'm assuming. And moving further down, you can see, aha, this is uh, where we start, need to start uh, having a closer look. So that's a HC4052D. That's a four, uh, actually, yeah, it's a, a dual four channel multiplexer. And then just above that, over here, that's a Linear Technologies Analog to Digital Converter. So quite likely what's happening here is this multiplexer is responsible for multiplexing the various or the different uh, uh, temperature probes. And then it's just read by that Analog to Digital Converter and then passed along to the microprocessor. We've also got some polyfuses uh, down here, I see, so that's probably for some additional protection. Uh, we'll just have to test those, but I suspect our problem component might be this little multiplexer. Uh, that'll be quite handy, these are not very expensive. Uh, we just have to then replace this part. Uh, I'm, I'm going to work out a way of testing it still, and uh, then hopefully the linear technologies uh, analog to digital converter up there has not uh, been damaged. Um, let's hold thumbs. Right, and there uh, you can see the two temperature inputs. Uh, <laughs> yes, it says the 24 volt max between the two. So uh, the 30 odd volts that I applied between these two probes definitely damaged this instrument. 
Uh, I want to actually show you on the inside of this uh, connector. It's got uh, cold junction temperature compensation. And if you don't know what that is, I'll link in Dave Jones' excellent video on uh, temperature probes uh, just down below. All right, and you can see on the back of this little probe board or probe input board, you can see there's an active component that just basically measures the temperature uh, at, at these uh, where these probes connect in. Uh, you have to have that in order to be able to compensate for the junction temperature of the metal sliding into these connectors. You'll see what I mean by that uh, on in Dave Jones' video. And here's our replacement part. I don't know if you can see inside the little bag there. I've quickly tested these polyfuses and all of them seem fine. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this uh, multiplexer chip now. Okay, and just finally removing all the flux residue with uh, some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Does the job nicely. And now I can put the new chip on. Right, so let's just get rid of that last bit of uh, flux residue. If I just move the light, you can see a slight amount of residue left there. So again, just apply some isopropyl alcohol. Just suck up that last bit of flux residue. There we go. Excellent. You can see this uh, chip manufacturer is now NXP. Uh, NXP actually merged with Philips. So it's the identical same part, just now manufactured by NXP. Alright, this is the moment of truth. Let's just flip it around like this and organize it so I can connect up the battery. Oh wait, hang on, let me just connect up some temperature probes here. That's one over there, that's T2. And grab T1. Go and let's switch her on. That's looking good. That's looking very good. Yes, I do believe we have a winner here. Right, let me put her back together. So, there you can see I've got the two K type probes plugged in at the top and we go that is absolutely fantastic they're both reading more or less the same actually they're reading exactly the same very very nice i can actually subtract the one from the other that's zero that's t1 and the same for the main display t2 the two subtractors from each other if i just heat up the one here i can get some temperature differential going there we go that's i'm just holding it with my finger Perfect. So if you like this quick repair video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.